cooking pot and barbecue and this would be quite clunky looking uh, in this day and age, but you were still a part of barbecue. Nada had a 3D projection kind of game basically. Um, imagine playing a rugby game or a soccer game on a PlayStation, except, of, except watching it on a screen, you'll have a, a kind of table that projects. So you have all the characters running around in front of you, and you can put your hands through them. Woo! Put your hands through them. Um, as I grew up, I just continued to always being inventive. Viscera clothing had some interesting uh, clothing designs, one of which ended up in Milan. Good girl creative process. Well, not as near as the designer, of course. Actually, it's interesting because just before leaving New Zealand, an old family friend came over and he reminded me of an invention I'd forgotten, which involved me getting a, the butter conditioner out of the fridge, a broken down fridge, and making it into a food warmer hot plate, um, kind of pseudo microwave, but for some reason that really stuck in his mind. <sighs> what can I say in my adulthood? I just haven't been creative, I mean, just been nothing, I've done nothing. I just, I wish I was an artist, I really do, I wish I was a visionary, I wish I could make publications, I could make music, I wish upon shooting stars, but shooting stars don't wish upon me. Oh well, maybe I might just get more creative in my adulthood. Do you keep a diary written or visual? Yes, I've always been one to keep diaries since um, childhood. However, I haven't been keeping a, a written diary for a year or so now, but it's not it's not unlike me to write my thoughts down each day and yeah, even for years and years on end. So those diaries are in New Zealand. I keep a visual diary just to be able to reflect on events and experiences that I come through. And I used to write it, but then I started typing it. And then I stopped writing. And now I just try and reflect on events and experiences that come to me on a day-to-day -day basis um, in my head. How do you like your subway, if at all? That's one of those things, very automatic question. I'm the kind of person who can... Who can go on the subway and here it goes. Here's my subway. Hi, can I have... A uh, vegetarian patty on Italian herbs and cheese bread toasted with Swiss cheese. Or a tuna, I explain later. Would you like any salads? Yeah, I'd like the works with more jalapenos and olives, thank you. Salt and pepper? Yeah, salt and pepper. And what are the sauces? Mm, I like sweet onion, maybe a bit of honey mustard. And yeah, Thousand Island dressing, thank you. Would you like anything else? Just for you to smile. Would you like anything else? Would you like to pay? I would indeed like to pay. So that's my subway. And what are or is the most interesting hallucinations of visions, etc., you've experienced whilst on consciousness altering substances? Interesting. Well, I guess I've been related more to green pasta and funky cardboard, and of course, every once in a while, a bit of magic mushroom, more so than others. But mostly psychedelic. Let's have a look. Once upon a time, whilst probably on microdots for all I know, I was walking down the road and I looked up in the sky and I saw a big face. An African mask as well before the hi ha hoo phenomenon. But it was very interesting and that was almost, I felt like, um, something communicating in regards to my ethnic ancestry. Also, sometimes when I'm tripping on acid, and I haven't had that many acid trips, maybe, okay, 15 in my life. Um, lying on my back, I can look up at the sky and fall into the sky actually, it just feels like I'm falling into the sky, I really like that, there's something about it, 
there's something very humbling about it, something very overwhelmingly grandiose, let's say, about the firmament. So falling into the sky is one. Um, it's interesting too, I've noticed that when I'm on, her, uh, on hallucinogens, I sometimes bring up Challenger. I have a thing for Challenger and space travel, and sometimes you kind of just get the feeling that people are just waiting for you to say something on Challenger. Um, most interesting trip probably has to be my first trip. It took place in high school, believe it or not, in sixth form. Because a friend called Alan England who said to me one morning in English class, I've got LSD. Would you like some? Me and a friend said, no. But my friend didn't believe him, and I probably didn't believe him either, but he gave me one of these funky cardboards. So off I go, I put it in my mouth, and he says, you have to pay me back. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting. Maybe it is real, but I didn't believe him. So for second period, we had computer science class, me and a friend, Bryce. We spent all computer science class talking, and I kept laughing. I remember we laughed. At the end of computer science class, I just came to someone and thought, Bryce, I said to him, Bryce, we've just been laughing for 40 minutes. And I don't know why he was laughing, but the thing was, my computer science teacher's voice was on really quick, like, so like a chipmunk, and I was quite surprised by that, but at that stage it hadn't really hit me that it had hit me, so to speak. And comes um, morning tea, and I went straight to Tom, my best friend, and said, Tom, I think this might be real, let's go find Alan. He said, don't, it's not real, don't let him think that, don't let him think it's real, rah, 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 and onwards it went. Third, third period, I've forgotten what class that was, but it was during fourth period, which things started getting really interesting, and it just happens to be a day in science, science class, over lunch, where we're doing these freaky against nature experiments, which like, for example, involving, um, heating up big balls which then contract and they go through a little ring of some sort, colour experiments, it was just one of these 10 wacky experiments, here I was, I remember looking at this Bunsen burner up in front of class and suddenly the flames just went boom, started licking the roof and I was like oh my god, um, I remember turning to my friend Joe and saying Joe I think um, really it's kicking in badly and Joe chose to draw aliens and say, look at these. That's less kind of how things were. Um, I was then asked a question, which I'd done for, or supposed to have done for homework by my teacher. And he said, what is heat capacity? And heat capacity, I can't even remember what it is now, but it's something slightly intricate, but not too intricate. But my answer was the capacity of heat. And he said, uh, Jay, there's something wrong with you today. That began a paranoia of sorts just growing within. Come lunchtime, I was like, oh my god. I grabbed my, went back to Tom, Tom, this is real, this is real, I'm really am tripping. This will happen right around, where's Ellen? Couldn't find Ellen. I said, oh my god, I think the teachers know because boys have started talking, people started talking. It's full of maybe 2,000 people. So I grabbed my best friend Bryce and I said, Bryce, look, we have to go through over the last night's homework and off we go, looking at homework. I was trying to memorise everything because I knew the teacher was going to test me. That's how, just how I felt. After a while I just couldn't really remember, remember anything. So I just thought, screw this Bryce, I'm just going to go play rugby. I was the kind of person who could go through different kinds of um, groups. So I went to the jocks and then we go and they're playing rugby in a tennis court. I remember a, Tim, a friend called Tim came up to me and said, Is it true that you're tripping today? And I said, No, no, not at all. So out came the ball and I passed me a rugby ball and Tim passed me a rugby ball and all I did was pass it back to someone else and he came up to me and said, nah, it's true. I mean, what did I do? Somehow in this action, you could just tell Dr. Terence McKenna. Okay, so the rest of the day, I often went back to science class, crazy experiments and I learned all the stuff and just kept really quiet and you know, sometimes I could almost hear people talking about me, but it was okay in the end. Um, all I remember was boys making crazy, crazy sounds. A few people we knew, Greg was one of them. He had a play doh, it was almost like he brought his own play doh to school somehow, but at lunchtime, and was making genitals out of it and saying, Nana, what do you think of this? And I was like, Anyway, that was it. It's a crazy, crazy event in short. Have you ever been close to any pet in particular, even a plant? 
Yes, my first love was a scrub as Betty, who was a small